My name is Neve Hughes and I am presenting on canine impact on mental health and well-being. The ancient Greeks used horses and dogs to reduce anxiety in patients. In Victorian England, Florence Nightingale utilised small animals to induce calmness in children under her care. More recently, research has been undertaken into the effectiveness of animal-assisted therapy, as well as on how canines affect our physiology. But we don't know if the success of animal-assisted therapy is down to the therapist, the training the animal has undertaken, or an innate quality the animals possess. The research this presentation represents seeks to take the first step to answering that question. The first part of our research involved 420 volunteer participants completing a questionnaire on their feelings as dog owners and their perceptions on the effect dogs have on mental health and well-being. They were given statements to answer with a Likert scale. The available answers were strongly agree, agree, somewhat agree, neither agree nor disagree, somewhat disagree, disagree and strongly disagree. From the left graph we can see that 80.7% of participants strongly agreed to the statement my life is improved by owning a dog. Whereas from the right graph, we can see that 52.5% of participants strongly agreed with the statement my dog tries to make me feel better when I am sad. The top left graph shows that 55.8% of participants strongly disagreed to the statement my dog causes me a lot of distress. The top right graph shows that 32.9% strongly agree and 33.8% agree to the statement my dog knows what I am feeling. The bottom left graph shows that 78.2% of participants strongly disagree to the statement my life has been made worse by owning a dog. The bottom right shows 80.7% strongly agree to the statement my dog brings me a lot of joy. These results show us that dog owners have a mostly positive perception of dogs and dog ownership. This graphs are histograms showing the gamut of emotion felt by the dog owners while partaking in a range of activities with their dogs. 100% of participants reported happiness while playing with their dogs, spending time with their dogs and walking their dogs. And 99.6% of participants reported happiness while grooming, while the other 0.4% felt relaxed. It is, however, important to note that further research should be done regarding whether the beneficial effects from dog walking are from the dog or the act of walking outside. The next histograms show the perception of dog owners on the effect dogs have on their mental health during different activities. For the activity of grooming, 38.3% of participants felt it improved their mental health. For the activity of walking their dogs, 92.7% felt it improved their mental health. For the activity of spending time with dogs, 95.8% felt it improved their mental health. And for the activity of playing with dogs, 93.1% felt it improved mental health. These results show that dog owners have an overall positive perception of dogs' effect on their mental health. These graphs show dog owner perceptions on canines' place in the professional sphere as therapeutic aids, in relation to their scores on the well-being and mental health questions. It is shown that a majority of participants believe dogs can help support people in therapy. A high well-being score shows someone with high emotional resilience, whereas a low anxiety score shows low anxiety levels in an individual. Our results show a trend of high well-being and low anxiety in dog owners. We ran three independent teeth tests on this data to check to see if there was a significant difference between participant scores where canines were trained and where they were not. And we checked our scores in well-being, mental health and the emotional effect of canines. For the well-being scores, there was no significant difference in the means for trained canines, with the mean being 6.6 for the mean standard deviation of 0.71, and untrained, mean being 6.36 and standard deviation of 0.63. The magnitude for this difference in the means was found to be very small after running an ETA squared. For the mental health scores, there was also no significant difference found in the means for trained canines, mean being 0.82 and standard deviation being 0.12, and untrained, mean being 0.89 and standard deviation being 0.17. The magnitude for any difference in the means was found to be very small, again after running an F squared. 
For the emotional effect scores, there was no significant difference in the means for trained canines, mean being 1.13 and standard deviation being 0.20, and untrained, mean being 1.21 and standard deviation being 0.22. The magnitude for the differences in this mean was also found to be very small after running a third eta squared. So what does this mean? For our sample, the fact that there was no difference between trained and untrained dogs leads us to believe that it's an innate effect of the animal itself. Dogs themselves have therapeutic value as opposed to the training. And this could affect how we go forward using animal assisted therapy and the training that is required for animal assisted therapy. Though this must be repeated as our sample size for trained canines was not as large as it should be to get better results. The participants were given a question asking whether they had any physical disabilities or mental health disorders. As can be seen in the word cloud to the right, depression, anxiety, GOD and panic disorders were reported as the most common disorders felt by our participants. The second part of our study involved 29 participants who agreed to undertake a questionnaire before and after intervention with their dogs. The questionnaire involved items taken from the current anxiety level measure and the PANIS, positive and negative effect scale. We asked the participants what activity they decided to undertake before doing the questionnaire for a second time. 77.8% of the participants chose dog walking as the activity. 14.8% groomed their dogs and 7.4% played with their dogs. The mean time undertaken for the activity was 61.85 minutes, with the minimum time being 30 and the maximum time being 420 minutes. The graphs on the right show the levels of anxiety before and after interaction with the dog. For the before scores, there is a minimum of 16 and a maximum score of 74. This has a mean of 24.45. There is a Z-Skewness score of 5.80 and a Z-Kurtosis score of 9.51. After anxieties has a minimum of 16 and a maximum score of 36, leading to a mean of 18.59. The Z-Skewness for this is 6.05 and the Z-Kurtosis is 10.40. This means that non-parametric tests are required to analyse the data. The non-parametric test chosen was the Wilcoxon signed rank test. For the anxiety scores, it indicated that the scores before the intervention were statistically significantly higher than those after the intervention. This test came back with a Z-score of minus 3.70 and a P-score of equal to 0 0.000. This means that we reject the null hypothesis and that the test itself was significant. Therefore, there is a difference in anxiety levels before and after interaction with a dog. The graphs to the right of the page show the before and after results for the positive effect of the PANIS scale. Before the intervention, there was a minimum of 11 and a maximum of 37, leading to a mean of 25.48. This had a Z-skewness of 18.97 and a Z-kurtosis of minus 1.84. After the interaction with the dog, there was a minimum score of 13 and a maximum score of 43, causing the mean to become 28.59. The Z-skewness score was 17.81 and the Z-kurtosis score was minus 1.17, meaning again that we needed to run a non-parametric test. The Wilcoxon signed rank test with the positive effect scores indicated that the positive scores before the intervention were statistically significantly lower than after the interaction with the dog, with a Z-score of minus 2.08 and a P-score of 0 0.038. This means we reject the null hypothesis and that our scores are significant, meaning dogs affect our positive perception. The bar charts to the right show the negative effect scores for before the interaction with the dog and after the interaction with the dog. For the negative effect scores before the interaction, there's a minimum score of 9, a maximum score of 41, and a mean score of 13.14. This has a Z-Skewness score of 6.70, 
and a Z-ketosis score of 9.36. The negative effect scores after the interaction with the dog have a minimum of 9 and a maximum of 18, meaning the mean is 10.07, having a Z-skewness score of 6.13 and a Z-ketosis score of 8.02. As these results are still non-parametric, we decided to run the Wilcoxon signed rank test for the third time. The third Wilcoxon signed rank test indicated that the negative effect scores after the interaction with the dog were statistically significantly lower than before the interaction with the dog, with a Z score of minus 3.02 and a P score of 0.003. We can reject the null hypothesis and accept that these results are significant. Dogs have an effect on our negative perceptions. 518 dogs took part in this research. Without them and their owners, this research would not have been possible. So thank you to every single one and their owners who took part. The big question now is what comes next? What does this research mean? Our research showed that dogs have inherent therapeutic worth. Their closest see them to show empathy and the results discussed in this presentation show that they have a positive effect on our emotional health, mental health and well-being. This could change the training that is currently undertaken to become a therapy animal. Or it could affect the way that anxiety, loneliness or other conditions are treated. It might one day get to the point where instead of going to a doctor and being prescribed medication, you get a pet. Although that is quite extreme and quite unlikely. More research needs to be undertaken as to the differences in trained and untrained dogs due to our limited trained population size. But the current results are very exciting. Thank you to everyone for listening and for keeping with me thus far. I hope you enjoyed this presentation as much as I have enjoyed researching this. The following slide includes all of my references that I have mentioned during this presentation and some of the research that helped make it happen. If you're interested, please feel free to stop and look. Thank you very much.